Hello everyone. I know I've talked to you about freezer mates before, but I just am so in love with freezer mates. I just have to tell you. Now we made soup today and I usually make my own chicken stock. Trust me, I won't judge you if you don't make your own, but I don't know if you know how easy it is to make and freeze chicken stock. Just every time I have a turkey or I buy a rotisserie chicken from one of the grocery stores, or I have any kind of chicken with bone that we're not using the bones, I pop them into my um, slow cooker and I throw in any number of things. I can, th I throw in carrots, I throw in onion, garlic, I throw in um, rosemary, thyme, I throw in salt and pepper, sometimes peppercorns, and even some fennel if I have it sometimes, celery, and I let it all just cook and cook and cook for, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours. Sometimes you can do it overnight, put it in after dinner, get it in the morning. It's awesome. And I put, I don't even peel things. I just literally chop them into chunks, like the carrots, plop them in and let it go. Mom, yeah. a question? Um, you know, when we were doing the spiralizer and you said you saved all the little pieces, like the ends of the fruit or the vegetables yep. that we were doing, and that's what another thing you put throw in the stock. No. Oh, you don't? Oh, I no. thought you put those. No, because oh, okay. you don't want potatoes and things in stock. You're flavoring a stock. You're not making a soup. Gotcha. I use those, but it's a good point. I use those when I'm making soup and I want to put vegetables in it. Oh, okay. So I have all gotcha. the ends of the potatoes and, th and the zucchini and things, and I mm -hmm. chop those up and put them in. But the nice thing about the stock is once it's done, it's cooked for ages, you take everything out, run it through a strainer. I have one of those, um, you know, pasta pots where the bottom part is the water and the top part is where you put the pasta in. It's a strainer. And I find if I just pour it in there, easiest strain ever. And then I turn to the new love of my life. Don't tell mom. But I heard that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the freezer mates. I have to tell you, I spent a year collecting these, had parties, did sales so that I could buy them with all my commissions. And I use them nonstop. Nothing in my freezer is in its original bags anymore. But with the stock, it's really great because I can put it in here where it's a little, I think this is a one and three quarter cup. Yep. So if I'm just making a soup that's just enough for dinner that night, that's all you need for stock. This one is a, boy, these are hard to read with all the lights on, four and three quarter cups. So this is a perfect size for four cups, which is usually what soups ask for. And what's really nice about these, they have these little feet underneath them that have like a wave shape to them. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And you know why that is? So they, they're not sitting flat on the bottom. Yeah. It cools it and freezes That's it better. That's right, the cold air mm -hmm. circulates. Mm -hmm. They're designed to stack on top of each other and the cold air will still circulate through there. They can stack, depending on the the freezer mate, in different ways. They're all made like little building blocks so that each side stacks on the other. The air still circulates and they freeze beautifully. They are um, yeah. That's yeah, they, my favorite. They're like ice cube trays, mm -hmm. so they squeeze. So you don't have to melt your stock. I used to save my stock in Ziploc bags and then I had to come in and let it melt. Nine times out of 10, when it froze, it popped a hole in the Ziploc. So my beautiful stock would be going down the sink. Um, or I, and if I chose not to let it go down the sink, then I would have to run it under hot water, try and get it unhinged from all the side of the plastic, and then cut the bag open so I could get the stock out and put it in the pot. With this, I go out to the freezer, I take the seal off, I just give it a little twist, it pops right out, and I'm ready to cook. It's amazing. These are um, stain proof. If you put things in at a cool temperature, so you're never gonna have tomato stains and things like that. They have a fill line so that you know how far you can go to allow for the expansion. You will find when you open something up from the freezer that there are some ice crystals here. Now don't, and sometimes on the top of your food, don't um, mix up the ice crystals with freezer burn. Freezer burn is when all the moisture has leached out of your product and vanished into the air because the, the packages you buy things in in the store are not airtight. Ice crystals are not freezer burn. Ice crystals are the normal moisture that releases from a, any sort of food that you put in the freezer. But because these are um, airtight, 
the ice crystals can't leave. The moisture can't leave. It will go up to the top, it will freeze, and then no more moisture will leach out. So your foods will stay incredibly fresh for an incredibly long period of time. And these sizes are so perfect with this one. When we buy ground beef or ground pork, this holds one pound. I don't even have to weigh things out anymore. I just fill this up, one pound, label it in the freezer. So depending on the size of your family, there's lots of different things you can do. We keep buns and breads and things in this size, muffins and that. It's perfect to stack them up and then you just pick out a couple a day as you want and keep them on the counter. As you can see over here, we have some on thawing for um, this week's sampling. But these things really are amazing. I, I literally cannot tell you how much I love them. They are in my top five Tupperware. I would like to take it with me to whatever comes after this and you can't get them out of my hands. So if you have any questions about these or how to make stock or anything like that, just give us a call like always. Bye.